I'm good to go now, Brett. Okay, we're live, I believe. Welcome, everybody. My name is Brett Hawk. I am one of the directors of Swim Camps and Clinics here at Fair and Faster. And we have a special presentation today. We're going to be doing some dry land with one of the leading dry land strength coaches in the country for swimmers. His name is Lee Summers, and he is the owner of personal purpose personal fitness in the dc area and currently he works with the nation's capital swim club and also rockville swim club and he was katie ledecky's coach for three years before the rio games i'd like to introduce lee right now how you doing all right brett how are you good man thanks for being with us now tyler clary was supposed to be here today leading but um he's come down with a migraine and so these things happen. So we're we're filling in. I like that Superman cup, man. I like that. A gift for my kids. <laughs> so we're going to get into some dry land here, I believe. You're going to lead us through some stuff. Um, why do you like working with swimmers particularly? Um, I mean, I've been working with swimmers now for the last, uh, call it seven, eight years. Um, I love working with swimmers because it's a, it's a much different challenge from the way that I grew up uh, being more of a court sport athlete. Uh, I played basketball. Uh, growing up and it's it, it offers a whole nother kind of element of, of challenges for me as far as dealing with some of the risk that comes with it um, and getting athletes to do something on dry land and with strength and conditioning that they don't do as part of their sport at all um, and getting them to really embrace how strength and conditioning can help enhance their performance in the water so at purpose uh, personal fitness what are some of the areas when you work with the swimmers that they need help with? Um, you know, and it's different at different ages. This is our, you know, the group that we're talking to today is more of our older 13 to 18 group, I believe. Um, okay. You know, we want to make sure we're addressing stability around the shoulder. Um, we're addressing core stability, trunk stability, and then yeah. we're treating them as athletes, not just specifically in the lane, no pun intended, of swimmers, um, yeah. so that they can produce more power, they can produce strength, um, they can get themselves where they need to be as quickly as possible and in, in, in an efficient as a manner as possible. Yeah. Um, so for me, I'm really, um, I love the idea of making athletes, especially swimmers stronger and then having them see that immediately translate to the water and have their times improving, um, and have their, themselves feel more powerful, whether it's walls, starts, stroke, pullouts, whatever it is. Um, as they can kind of conceptualize what it feels like to be stronger and then swim faster. It ties together so nicely, um, especially with athletes who don't have a ton of exposure to it at the onset. Great. Okay, good. Well, we have this uh, workout here today, which I am going to post at the end of the workout. But basically, Lee is going to take us through a bunch of these exercises. Can you read that, Lee? Yes, sir. Okay, great. Uh, Lee's going to run us through this today. How much space do we need? Um, so as, for those of you that have been on uh, this one for the last few weeks um, with Tyler and myself, make sure you've got enough room that you're not going to hit yourself on anything. Okay. Last thing we want to do is injure you on a table or a chair or a wall. Um, today, as opposed to the last few weeks, we are going to do a little bit more movement. We're going to do what's ca called a dynamic warm up, um, mm -hmm. a little bit more athletic in nature. Keep it, keep it simple, but make sure you've got some room. Okay, great. All right, let's get going then. All right. Um, and Paige, I'm um, seeing a couple of questions. Paige Gust, um, it, it should be about 45 minutes to an hour. I'll leave some time at the end for a question and answer. Um, and Brett, if you see, as I'm doing this, I won't be able to see the, uh, the chat on yeah. the right side. If you're seeing some chat, you're seeing some questions that are specific to what we're doing, feel free to shout them out and I'll answer them real time. Okay. Uh, and um, guys, when we start getting into it and I start to tell you there's three sets of something, I'll show you the first set. I'll walk you through it and then we'll go through it once and then I'll sit, wait for some questions and allow you guys to do it two more times for a total of three. But we're not there yet. So I'll explain that as we go. All right. So we're going to work our way to the floor first. And the first thing we're going to do, guys, uh, the first couple that we're going to do are ones that we've been doing. Um, so this is all kind of filters from, we'll just call this a warm up or movement prep. So the first one is gonna be cat cow, starting on all fours, knees under your hips, hands underneath your shoulders. And 
Try not to do too much of this movement at your shoulder. You're gonna try and tuck your tailbone, round out your spine, tuck your head under, and then bring yourself back to here. We're gonna do 10 of those. I'll give you some time, you should move slowly, one segment of your spine at a time. So tuck your tailbone, your low back rounds, your mid back rounds, your upper back rounds, and then your cervical spine right around your head and neck rounds. And then you bring yourself back to neutral spine. We do 10 of those guys, so I'm gonna let you do that on your pace. Do not rush this exercise. We're trying to move, just you shouldn't feel a burn or a ton of tension here. We're really just trying to move those muscles along your spine pretty fluidly. From there, you should be finishing up 10. Next exercise is gonna be your bird dogs, which we've also been doing. Opposite arm and leg. Reach for the wall in front of you and behind you. Try and stay long, brace in your core so there's no low back arching. You're holding a good brace. Make sure you're not tilting your hips. You're staying completely level. You'll do 10 on one side, and then when you're done, do 10 on the other. You guys, excuse my, my tights. I was outside working out right before I uh, started with you guys, so it's a little cold and windy here in Maryland. We're uh, experiencing some insane winds. Yesterday during my uh, Fitter and Faster webinar with the younger kids, one of my kids came running downstairs screaming, Daddy, the basketball hoop just blew over. Um, so it's a little crazy here. I'm not sure how many of you guys are from D.C., Maryland, Virginia area. It's been a little crazy the last 24 hours. All right, the next one is one we haven't done yet. Um, I'm going to call this an all-fours hip complex. Um, so the way it's going to look, I'll show you from a couple different angles. First one, you're starting at all-fours position again. And you're gonna pick up your knee and do a small circle around that hip, okay? Small, slow and controlled. Breast strokers thinking about us getting lots of control over that hip complex. The more control you have over your hips, the better for your stroke. You'll do 10 in one direction, then you'll do 10 in the other. And then the last one will be a fire hydrant for obvious reasons, which you'll see in a second. Out to the side and back in. So if you guys can see that, we're going out and in, just like that. One more view. Here. 10. Okay? So you do 10 of each of those, 30 total, and then you'll switch sides. As you're doing this, keep your core engaged. Try not to tilt your body at all. Keep everything else level as you move through your hip. 10 circles in one direction, 10 circles in the other direction, and then 10 fire hydrants. Okay, I'll give you guys a couple seconds to complete that. And Brett, can you tell how many people we have in the room today for this one? Yeah, we're at about 200 right now. Oh, awesome, that's fantastic. Hopefully everyone is, uh, Either taking a break from online school or they're done with online school for the day. All right, the next one. We're going to get into what I call dynamic flexibility. Okay, so this is part of a warm up as well. I'm going to have to be able to see my lower body a little bit. Okay, and I'm going to move in and out of your screen a little bit for, the, for this next five minutes. So we're going to get some extra flexibility drills. First one. Just think about this, dig in your heel, hinge your hips, so you're sitting back in your hips, and scoop up, okay? When you do that, put the leg out in front, hinge, so this leg is straight, reach and scoop up. You should feel that stretch as you're doing it, back here, hamstring the calf. Well, why do we scoop, Lee? What's that? Why do you do the scoop? Why, so I, I really just want people to conceptualize the idea of reaching as far as they can, Mm -hmm. and then coming up out of it, rather than a lot of times I'll just see people just do this yeah. or just rush through it. I want them to get the feel for reaching for their toes, hinging yeah. their hips back, so they're getting that big stretch on their posterior chain. Okay, great. We'll do 10 of those. Then when you're done, the next one we're going to go to is going to be a high knee hug. You're going to pull the knee up to your chest, push up to your big toe, and then switch sides. So now we're getting higher hamstring glute stretch. Pull up and pull up. We're going to do 10 of those, five on each leg. And 
you should be finishing up with that. Next one is just going to be a quad stretch, opposite hand and foot. So I'm going to grab this foot and pull up, push up to the big toe, and then switch it up. Get as long as you can between this knee and the fingertips. Pull. Now with this quad stretch, make sure that you're not pulling out here. You're pulling towards your midline. Pull kind of towards the middle of your butt, towards your spine, so that that knee isn't going in the direction it doesn't want to go. Okay, we'll do 10 of those. Next one after that, guys, we're going to do a standing glute stretch or a piriformis stretch where you're grabbing lower leg but the outside portion of the leg and pulling up. Again, if you, can, if you have the balance to push to your big toe of the down leg, do it. So you're going to grab and pull up. You should feel that stretch out here, lateral portion of your hips. Ten of those. And then we're going to do two more that we've been doing. The first one is inchworms. So again, keep your legs as straight as you can. If you have a little bit of knee bend, that's okay. Try not to just plop forward at your spine. Instead, hinge at your hips. Find the floor with your hands. If you cannot find the floor with your hands with your legs straight, bend them a little. And then as you walk out, start to straighten them. Okay? So it'll look like this. Here. Walk it out slow and controlled. And then walk it in with your feet. Okay? We'll do four of those. And like I said, guys, if there are any questions about these, we're going to go through each one of these just once today. This is part of our warm-up. If there are any questions, feel free to let me know. Yeah, nothing yet. Just a few comments here and there, but no, no questions yet. Okay. And so, guys, just so you know, this is for you. Make sure this is you guys are doing the workout. We're just not talking, okay? So make sure you're going through all the exercises. If something doesn't feel right, you let me know. Ask questions. Uh, but otherwise, we're just going to keep going. Next one is world's greatest stretch or elbow to instep, as we talked about before. Big step, strongest heel from head to heel. One straight line, set you up this way so you can see. No rounding in the back. We're going to flatten out the back, straighten out that back leg as hard as you can. Left knee is in front, left elbow comes in. Rotate from here, not from your shoulder by flinging it back like some of my swimmers do. Rotate from your trunk. Look up at your hand, back down, rock back until you feel that stretch here, and then stand up. And then we do the same thing on the other side. We'll do three on each side, guys. Elbow in, rotate out, back leg is straight, nice and strong and stable, back down, rock back. Okay, give you time to do three on each side, guys. All right, now the next two, I'm sorry, the next series of exercises is what I call dynamic warm-up. I'm going to show you from a couple different angles. This is one where hopefully you're in a room where you've got some space, like, like your basement or your outside right now, okay? Dynamic warm-up is just kind of an athletic warm-up to get all the segments of your body warmed up, ready to move, okay? First one is going to be a high knee skip. Like I said, I'm going to show you from a couple of angles. When you skip, a lot of my swimmers just like to bound like this. I want you to be tight. I want you to have your elbows bent at 90 degree angles. So when this knee comes up, this elbow comes back, hand to hip. And then as I skip to the other side, hand comes to the ear. I'm gonna get a little bit more specific with the older group than I do with the younger group, okay? So we're looking for a skip where you're driving the knee up and then driving the foot down in front of you, okay? So it'll look something like this. Elbows are bent, hand is going pocket to ear, pocket to ear, looking at it from the side. Drive the foot down in front of me. Okay, stay up tall, try not to collapse. Okay? Once you've done that for about 10 yards, you'll do it backwards. So same thing, I'll start way up here with you guys. And opposite knee to hand. You're just driving the foot, now you're driving the knee up, and back, 10 yards. Lee, this is the part of the warm-up where their heart rate should be coming up a little bit? Oh yeah, by the time we're done with all this, at the pace we're going, 
your heart rate should be starting to elevate, maybe even getting a little bit of sweat. Okay, next one is going to be a karaoke. We'll get some lateral agility here. So what you're gonna do, cross the leg behind, step this leg over, cross this leg in front. Notice you can read my shirt the entire time. So your chest should stay parallel to the wall in front of you. Your hips are what rotates, so it's here. Okay, and then back the other way. So the foot goes in front, foot, and then foot goes behind. Okay, so we're working on hip turn and hip mobility. Okay. Lee, we had a question. Is this for beginners, intermediate, or advanced type athletes? So to be honest, I teach this dynamic flex and this dynamic warm up to everything from 8 to 18, all the way through Olympic level. If we're doing athletic movements, if we're doing plyos, um, if it's not just a strictly strength session, and we're going to do some stuff like jumps, we're going to do rotational things, you know, whether it's rotational med ball throws or whatever it is, if we're trying to produce power, I want them to be athletically warmed up. So I, te I start teaching at a very young age, but it goes all the way through high school and college. Okay? Okay. Um, the more athletically warmed up you are, the easier it'll be for you to start to produce force. Okay? Not unlike warming up before you get into your main sets of practice, um, you, you need to kind of prepare your body to do the things it needs to do on a strength and conditioning, uh, strength and conditioning perspective as well. All right, great, thanks. Okay, next one. We're gonna start right here in a defensive stance. If any of you guys play basketball or have seen basketball, we'll get go shoulder width apart, toes are facing straight forward. You can do whatever you want with your arms. We're just gonna slide, okay? And I don't have a lot of room here for this, but we're gonna slide. Don't cross your feet. We're just sliding 10 yards to your right and then 10 yards back to your left. Should be finishing that up. And then the last one is going to be butt kicks. I'll have to show you this one from the side. Pretty self-explanatory. Stay on the balls of your feet. We're starting to warm up those hamstrings. Okay, taking those hamstrings through a good range of motion, 10 yards. And then on the way back, we're just going to do a Frankenstein march. Stay tall and raise that leg up. Make sure when you do this, you don't collapse your hips, okay? Stay up tall through your hips and move as high as you can. Everyone will be different. Okay, now hopefully, at this point, everyone has, I'll adjust this for a second. Hopefully at this point, everyone has gone out and got their mini bands. I know every week we have a, you know, a few more people that got their mini bands. I'm sure there are people on this webinar that don't have mini bands yet, so I'll show an alternative. But if you have your mini bands, I'm gonna show you the same mini band series we've been doing. So with, at this age, it's either a green or blue, but that's depending on what type of mini bands you get. So I'd call it medium to heavy resistance, put it above your knees, okay? So that would look like this. Band goes above your knees, which we've been doing. Feet are shoulder width apart, and then you're doing knee dives. Let the band slowly push you in, and then drive out of it. 10 on one side, 10 on the other, and then 10 with both. Once you're done with that 10, you'll do 10 slides. Slide, keep your hips level, toes facing straight forward, not turning out. If your feet start turning out, we get a muscle involved that we don't really want to be involved. Don't need to go into the specifics of what muscle that is. But if your feet can stay facing straight forward, we get a lot of glute medius, which is important. Those are, those are your lateral hip muscles, and they're really important as far as your ability to be efficient in the water, hold good body positions throughout your rotational strokes. Okay, now if you don't have the mini bands, here's the alternative we've been doing it the last couple of weeks. Um, you're going to go sideline, bottom knee is up, top leg is straight, and we're raising that leg for 10, driving that knee up for 10, and then doing 10 small circles, again, trying to get control of your hip complex, 10 small circles in each direction. Okay, once you're done with that, on both sides and the minivan work, we'll go to the next one. Come in here. 
What are minivans, Elizabeth? Let me go grab my minivan and I will show you. Yeah, I was going to ask you, where's your minivan? Yeah, I left it downstairs from the virtual this morning. It's okay. Everybody can watch me do some push-ups while we wait. Might as well get off my chair. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, Elizabeth, this is a mini band. Okay, so when I said it goes above your knee, it would look like this. So this band is pushing me in, and I have to use these muscles to resist that. I love mini bands, they're incredibly versatile and they're very portable. You can take them with you to every swim meet and get active, get activation on your hip complex. You can do it in a lot of different ways. You know, we do the slides. We do speed skaters, driving out. We do single leg balance and reach. These are all great exercises for getting control of your hip complex. And if you move the resistance in different places, it creates a different type of resistance at the hips. I also love them for shoulder exercises, which we'll go into another time. But some of the shoulder exercises I like, I would not use this resistance, this is a bit much. But externally rotating, pushing out, driving up, really lights up the shoulders. Okay? So that's your mini band. Hmm. Okay, so here, I'm sorry, I, there's a lot of questions coming in and I'm kind of far away from the screen. Um, the different colors, are different resistances depending on what brand you get. So with mine, which are kind of the most common, are from Perform Better, and we can go over this as far as where you get this, but Perform Better. Nice. one 800 556 although I hear they're out of them right now. Um, I'm sure. If you're using these, yellow is the lightest, then green, then blue, then black, black being the heaviest, okay? Last exercise, guys, of our movement prep is gonna be dead bugs. So, you're gonna lie on your back, tabletop position, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. From here, get your ribs down and tuck your tailbone until your low back is flat to the floor. You want to hold that brace where your low back is flat to the floor and move two limbs. One arm, the opposite leg, hold that brace. Your low back cannot leave the floor. <sighs> Breathe out your air and then come together. There, it should be challenging to hold that brace as those limbs move. <sighs> You're going to do 10 of those. Slow and controlled. The longer you're out in that extended position holding that brace, the tougher it'll be. Now, this is the first time today where I'll mention that I can't see you guys. Normally when I'm training my teams, I, when I'm training them virtually, I can see them, whether it's five, whether it's 15, whether it's 25, I can see them, I can coach, I can cue, um, and I also program according to who I'm working with. Right now we're keeping this general, giving you guys a good workout that we know will be appropriate for the masses. Eventually, actually coming up very soon, we're gonna start offering semi-private training as for dryland during this quarantine time. Um, so you'll be seeing more details about that on Fitter and Faster, both in social media and in emails about the ability to do virtual sessions with me where I can see you, coach you, and program specifically for you. Um, so if you have questions about that, obviously feel free to ask. All right, so we're done with movement prep. We're going in to our strength portion. Okay, so I'm gonna set this up so you can see this. Okay, so. On your sheet, um, if this is going to be shown as band rows or cable rows. Let's do that. I'm going to give you two different types of rows today. And for today's purposes, like I said, we're trying to appeal to the masses. You can do both. You can mix it up. Um, normally in a regular session, you would be doing one. And then on another day, you'd be doing another. So this is your horizontal row, which we've been doing. Wrap it around something. The resistance should be pretty strong because we're going to be using your lats 
Your lats are the biggest muscle in your upper body. They can really move some resistance, hopefully. You're going to do a little quarter squat now. Chest stays lifted, and you're going to row. Okay? Squeezing your shoulder blades. Down and back, trying to squeeze a pencil in between your shoulder blades. Okay? You're going to do that for 12. The alternative, if you want to try something different than we did last week, you're just going to take a different orientation. So, hinge at your hips, flat back, and you're going to pull. Okay? This is a lot like doing a pull up or a lat pull down. Pull the handles to your ears, shoulders down and back, and it gets more lat specific. So that's either a vertical pull or a horizontal pull. Okay? Question, um, hey, uh, Lee, is this a circuit that they could do every day, or how many times a week should they do this? So, you know, it depends on, it depends on how specific you're trying to get with your programming and what type of results you're trying to get. Nothing that we're going to do today should uh, if you did it three times a week you certainly won't get injured you'll get stronger you'll get more stable where you need to be stable um, i love the idea of varying your exercises varying your angles and your lines of pull and your positions because there's a lot of muscles in the body so doing the same thing over and over again your body will stop being will stop getting stimulated by it and you'll you know you'll you'll do this with your strength and your gains and all of a sudden it'll just kind of level off because you've been doing the same thing Okay. What about if they just wrap the towel around that pole that you've got there and then kind of use that as a row? Is that like if they don't have a band, is that something they could do? It'll be very, it'll be very simple and typically very easy unless they can hang it from something because, like, I can't get all that far away from this. And when I'm yeah. holding the towel to here, I have mm -hmm. no resistance, right? Okay. If I hold myself to this position, there's no longer resistance. You could set up something where if you had two chairs, let's say, Mm -hmm. And you put a pole over those two chairs, you could then grab that pole mm -hmm. and pull yourself up. Now you've got something because you've now given some leverage and you can create something that will be a little bit more demanding on your backside. Now, the other question is if you don't have bands right now and you have dumbbells, let's say, we'll go back to this one, which is another one of my favorite exercises. Pretend this is my dumbbell or something heavy in your house, paint can possibly, you're gonna grab and rub. Okay, and that would be 12 on each side. Second exercise is going to be your split squat. We have not done these yet, okay? You can load these up with weights, one of two weights. Either grab two equal weights and hold them at your sides, or if you have just one thing and it's heavy, you can hold it here. This is a kettlebell. Hold it here. From there, your feet are going to be set up hip width apart. Be careful when you step forward into this that you're not walking a tightrope. Do not step one foot right in front of the other and start doing this. Hip width apart to start. Big step. And then you're just going to drop the back knee towards the floor and come on up. More of my weight should be on this front leg. Down. And up. So to see that from the side, step and control on the way down. We're going to do 10 on each side. And third exercise, I'll let you guys get through that first round. So we'll get, we'll go through this first round together and then I'll give you guys some time to get through rounds two and three. So you should be finishing up leg one and switching over to leg two. We're going to do 10 on your right leg, 10 on your left leg. Okay, give you guys about 15 more seconds. You should be feeling that in the front leg, quad and glute. You may also feel a stretch in that back leg, a little bit in the front of that back leg, that hip flexor quad. That's all fine. Here's an important part. You shouldn't feel this a lot in your knees, if at all. Okay, so if you feel something more in your knees than you do in the muscles that are supposed to be the prime movers here, there's something that you need to be coached or cued out of, or the exercise might not be appropriate for you. It could also be foot positioning. Make sure when you take your step, make sure you can see my feet, that when you take that step, neither foot is facing in. Okay, you don't want the feet facing in because the knee doesn't really want to do that. Okay, third exercise. You're going to do a side plank 
Bottom knee is down. Bottom foot is behind you. You're going to side plank up. Hold a good, strong, stable lateral position here. Lots of stability between the hip and the core and the shoulder. And then you're going to do abduction. You're going to do a leg lift with this top leg. As you do that, make sure your hips aren't falling down. You're staying solid in your side plank while doing that leg lift. You'll do 10 on one side, 10 on the other. All right. All right. Okay. All right. So, trying to keep up with some questions here. Um, rows are probably one of my favorite go-to exercises. There's a lot of different ways to do rows as far as arm slotting, whether you're rowing this way, you're rowing neutrally, you're using a TRX, you're using dumbbells. There's a million different, whether you're doing a vertical row, there's a million different ways to do rows, but the bottom line is the more we build up the backside musculature of your upper body around your shoulders, the safer your shoulders will be. When you think about swimming, a ton of it, the actual performance of the sport is internal rotation out in front of you, okay? So the more we can build up those big back muscles, that are gonna support your shoulders, the safer your shoulders will be, and the more force you'll be able to produce in the water, okay? Uh, Lily, I believe that Brett's gonna post this workout after. Yes. Uh, after the session. Um, and again, we'll also talk about how you guys can get in touch with me if you have specific questions. All right, so you should be done with at least round two of all of those. So your rows, whether you did them vertically or horizontally, your split squats, and your side plank with abduction of the top leg, three rounds each. Can we do rowing machine instead of the exercise you showed? Um, so the question is, depends on what type of rowing machine you mean. Uh, if, you have a, if, if you have like a loaded, whether it's plate loaded or band loaded, machine where you're doing specific rows. Yes, it's just another variation of a row, and typically I'm gonna like it. Um, if we're talking about an ergonomic, like, uh, like an erg, where you're doing like the actual sport of rowing, it does not replace that. It's a great conditioning tool, but it won't replace your strength exercise row. Which exercise is best to improve in butterfly, I'm guessing that is? Um, that's a really loaded question. Um, getting stronger is great for butterfly. Uh, I mean, it's a very shoulder and core dominant stroke. And so building up your core, your ability to both move through your core and be stable through your core will pay large dividends for your shoulders because otherwise your shoulders have to take on the majority of that stroke and you'll, you'll kind of pay the price. But I love the idea of doing pullovers where you have a resistance up here and I would say it's a band, but it's attached high, and you're pulling over like that. And you can do that with a body lean. Really, if, you're, if you can get that connection between here and your lats, pulling down and back and engaging your lats, it's a great exercise. All right, we should be midway through round three. And Arshin Kavari, if you do want to message me, I'll kind of give you my contact information. Um, if you want me to give you some specifics, you know, I can absolutely do that. Uh, Taylor, or Tyler, what's the second exercise again? The second exercise was your split squats. I'll show that one one more time. Kind of just show you from, show it from a low angle. So we're here, big step. Stay squared up. All toes are facing straight forward. And... 10 per side, loaded with dumbbells or loaded with a weight in front of you. Lily, that is a loaded question. We would need to talk offline about that. 
um, you know, why, what the knee issues are, why they are what they are, um, and then go from there. Um, bottom line is if you have knee issues, we want to build up strength. We want to build up stability. And so we need to do that in your lower body. We have to find ways to do that where it's not bothering your knees. Tabitha, unfortunately, that's another loaded question. Um, I'm a distance swimmer. Is there something that you would suggest for endurance? Swimming. Uh, <laughs> I mean, there's going to be no replacement for putting in the yardage, putting in the volume in the water. Um, you know, typically that's not going to be what falls on me. I do. I was talking to someone yesterday who was asking me about swimming. Um, a guy who reached out to me from another sport but asked about training swimmers. I love the idea of when you're training a distance athlete, an endurance athlete, throwing something that they don't use as part of their energy system at them for conditioning. So for instance, uh, we'll just use Katie, Katie Ledecky, because she is the world's greatest endurance athlete or at least endurance swimmer ever. Uh, I, I would never throw stuff at her that was long duration cardiovascular exercise because she got that in her practices. What I would do is I would throw things at her that were more anaerobic, more sprint in nature. So I had to challenge that energy system. So I tried to challenge her with short bursts of very intense exercise so that she could really get comfortable with being uncomfortable. The more, Because in your sport, at the end of races, there's going to be a point of discomfort. You have to be able to push through that. So learning how to do that and getting the feel for what it feels like to be really uncomfortable and still finishing is a really big psychological barrier that some people don't ever get over. All right, guys, we should be done with that one. So now we're going to go to the next block of exercises. We'll go back to the floor to start this. We've done this a couple of times now. I'm going to give you guys some progressions that I like. So push-ups. If you're not strong enough to do really solid full range of motion push-ups, as we talked about, you're going to go from your knees, tuck the tailbone, strong as steel from head to knees, down under control, and up. What we're going to do is we're going to add a piece to that. So. I've got a bunch of different push-ups. I'm going to show you a bunch of my favorite push-ups in a second. But for now, let me just show you what this one will look like. It'll be down, up, shoulder tap. Down, up, shoulder tap. Now, if you can do that same thing from here, great. Okay. You're going to do 12 of those. Now, some of my favorite push-ups I love for swimmers, that shoulder tap push-up is a huge one because it requires core stability, upper body strength, and shoulder stability. Some other ones that I like, because swimmers do have to go overhead and have stability overhead, is a down dog push-up. Progressing that one step further, down dog, no tap push-up. Or a key push-up, down, up, Rotate only through here. Okay, we don't need to get to all of those today, but just to give you guys kind of get your mind working on the different ways that you can use a push up to get upper body strength, core strength, and shoulder stability. Okay, so you're going to do 12 of those. When you're done, you're going to grab a lighter band that you were using for the rows. You're going to grab it at about shoulder width apart, palms down, and you're going to pull the band apart, pull it to your chest. Okay? This is going to work on those muscles in between your shoulder blades. This is the shoulder health exercise. Okay? So pulling it apart. Someone in the younger group yesterday, when I had them do this exercise, asked me, I feel a lot in my upper traps. Should I feel it there? The answer is no, probably not. That being said, these muscles like to take over exercises if you let them. So make sure when you're pulling, you're not pulling up like this. Try and pull down and back. So from this angle, don't pull up here. Think about starting them about, right about chin level and then pulling down a little bit and trying to get those shoulder blades to go down and back. Okay, you're going to do 10 of those. And then the third are, are clap push-ups safe? Are clap push-ups safe? Uh, it really depends on the person. For the majority of people that I know, no. I mean, worst thing that's going to happen is you're not going to you're not going to get back to it. You're going to fall on your face. So um, 
I will tell you that I really, another question I get a lot is what about burpees? I hate burpees. I want to print t-shirts that say hashtag no burpees. Um, the risk reward with burpees um, isn't there. There is very little reward for a lot of risk at a lot of different segments of your body. Clap push-ups don't fall into that. There's far less moving pieces. If you can do a clap push-up, I'm okay with it, but it really depends on the person. You better be able to stabilize at your shoulder, perform really solid push-ups, even with your clap. Otherwise, you're just adding the clap just to add something cool. Okay, next exercise. We've done this before. I'm gonna change it for today. So we've done bridges, and we've done single leg bridges. Okay, today what we're gonna do is something where we work on the timing of your hip extensors, your glutes. So when you're in your stroke, let's just say when you're in freestyle kick, as you kick, one glute turns on, one glute turns off. One, we'll just say, contracts while the other one relaxes. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna do a bridge, and then we're gonna hold right there as you lift one leg. Now this glute is turned off. You can put your hands back there if you want. The one that I'm on is turned on. It's contracted, this one is relaxed. Then bring that leg down and switch legs. So you're gonna keep your hips level, keep your hips up, and just go through that march. You're gonna do 20, 10 on each side. Okay, so the three exercises, your push-ups, your band pull-aparts, and your bridges with a march. 12 push-ups, 10 to 15, depending on how this is feeling, pull-aparts, and 20 total, 10 on each side, marches in your hip bridge. Okay, I'll be here. You're gonna go through that. Two more rounds, three total. Donna wants to know who I coach. Uh, I currently coach Nation's Capital Swim Club um, and Rockville Montgomery Swim Club. I also, right now, because I've got a lot of college athletes who aren't able to swim, I do have a lot of my college swimmers back from school um, that I get to work with. Um, but over the years, I've worked with some, some pretty high-level athletes um, that have done really well at the college level, professional level, and uh, at the Olympic level. I can't tell which was the beginning of these questions. All right. I don't know which way these questions are coming. Uh, we're going to post the workout. Uh, we're going to post the workout at the end. I'm going to make sure that everybody who gets a copy of this We'll email it to you, no problem. You guys should be finishing your second round right now at the very least. Corbin wants to know if I've ever worked with Michael Phelps in any way. Uh, no, I was out of the Olympic Training Center multiple times with Nations Capital and with Katie when Michael was out there and have met him. I have done some work with his uh, his old strength coach, Keenan Robinson, who's now out of the Olympic Training Center, uh, who's great. I'm trying to tell which way these questions are coming in, if it's from the top or the bottom. I'm going to try the bottom now. Okay. Curious. Someone tell me where Clovis is. Is that Clovis, New Mexico, the Wildcats? I see a lot of Clovis on here. Clovis. Yeah, I see a lot of people from Clovis posting on here, which is fantastic. Thank you for coming out.
All right, you guys should be coming close to the end of that third set. Push-ups, band pull-aparts, and bridge march. Okay. Ah, thank you, Matthew. Yes, and David and Clayton. That's awesome. Thanks for coming on, guys. You know them? I don't, but I'll tell you what, Brett, I would like to go do a uh, fitter and faster clinic out in New Mexico. I've never been to New Mexico. I have. It was very cool. I don't do a ton of the clinics anymore, um, but I would love to go to places I haven't been, and that is definitely one of them. NASA Wildcats, I have been to um, Illinois. I was in Chicago at the, uh, I believe it was Chicago Latin School and did a great clinic there with Matt Grievers. Haley Plummer, what should you do if your knee starts to hurt? Your knee should not be hurting on these exercises. So if it is, we need to kind of look at it, pick it apart, make sure you're paying attention to all the coaching and cueing that you're getting. Um, and it may be a question of which way your feet are facing or how long your step was on the um, – on the split squat, hopefully your knee should not hurt on the bridges. If it hurts on the bridges, that's kind of an issue. Madeline, I have never been to Michigan, shockingly. Wow, that is shocking. Have I been to Georgia? Yes, I did do a clinic with, man, I want to say it might have been. No, it wasn't Tyler. Uh, with Scott Welts. Mm -hmm. um, it was right outside of Atlanta. I forget where. So you know, I definitely want to go to Michigan. So we are we up to planks? Is that what we do next? Yeah. So the last thing we're going to do, guys, and then we're going to go to a, a little Q and A, is we're going to do um, a plank challenge. You guys will be fine with it, um, but you're going to remember the way that we taught the planks the other day. And then when I say go, Brett is going to start a timer on his phone, and we're going to go. I'll explain it to you in a second, but let's remember how to do a plank. You guys don't need to do this yet. Just watch me to remember how to initiate the plank. You'll start from here. This is called a hard style plank. Push your fists into the floor. Pull your elbows back towards your hips. So create that friction and then straighten out your legs as hard as you can and form one straight line out of your body. So no arching, no falling. One straight what about, the, what about the head? Where should their eyes be looking? Your eyes should be looking, so good question, Brett. We want to tuck your chin and stay right here in line, looking right out in front of you, not looking up, not looking down. You'll yeah. hear me say the words neutral spine a lot. Neutral spine applies to back, to low back, obviously. You don't want to be too arched or rounded, but it also applies to your cervical spine. So you don't want to have a head jetting forward or looking up or looking down. You should be looking right out in front of you with a little bit of a chin tuck. Okay? Okay. So the plank challenge, guys. You're going to do a 30-second plank. Make sure you're breathing the whole time. When you are done with the 30 seconds, Brett will tell you, and you're going to get 30 seconds of rest. Then you're going to do a 20-second plank, then 20 seconds of rest, and then a 10-second plank. So Brett will. All right. Here we go. You ready? You want me to start the clock? As you're ready, just let them know. All right, here we go. 30 seconds on, 30 seconds rest. Ready, go. Yep. So, mm -hmm. Avery, this should not be horrible, but if you're doing a hard style plank where you're really get staying engaged and tight, it should be a challenge. You shouldn't, be able, to type, you shouldn't be able to type messages during these 30 seconds. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> um, All right, we're down 20 seconds, 10 to go. Come on, hold it. Five seconds. And rest. 30 seconds of rest. Um, Layla, have I been to Virginia? Absolutely. I worked in Tyson's Corner for eight years, and I live in Maryland, so I'm not that far off. Uh, if your legs start quivering, is that okay? Yeah, this should be challenging. If you're feeling core quivering a little bit, or your legs are, if you're really tightening up your legs and keeping them as straight as you can, yes, absolutely. Okay, we're going to start the 20 seconds now. Five seconds, hang on. Three, two, one, go. 20 seconds. So hold that tight body position. Don't think of a plank as an ab exercise. Think of 
this as a total body rigidity exercise or working on stability. Shoulders, hips. Three, two, one, rest. 20 seconds off. The last one is 10 seconds. Okay, you should be resting. We're going to get ready to go again in five seconds. Three, two, one, go. Come Last on, seven, seconds. seven seconds, guys. Make it count. And rest. All now, right. How many rounds of this are they doing? That is just that's just kind of a core finisher after a spring session. They're just going to do it one time. Okay. Um, you could certainly, if that was easy, go for a minute, 45 seconds, 30 seconds, mm -hmm. or 40, 30, 20, 10. Um, you can mess around with it. I don't love the idea. Typically, uh, when I'm assessing my athletes at the beginning of a season, I'll see how long they can plank for in total. But normally, I don't like doing planks for very long periods of time. And I can explain why it's kind of a, um, a really long-winded answer. But I want you to think about your sport and how often you need to hold tightness and bear down and hold a brace for long periods of time. You don't. And if you're doing that in the water, you're doing it wrong. Um, so the ability to turn on and off through your hip complex, through your core, is kind of what your sport is all about. Okay? So I don't love the idea of doing it for long periods of time. Okay? Stacy, absolutely. You're very welcome. Um, so a couple of things that I wanted to touch on before I let you guys go. Um, as I mentioned, we are going to be doing um, some semi-private versions of sessions um, where the programming will be very specific for eight, both age groups and what we're trying to accomplish. So there'll be a one day where you'll be doing strength and power for, uh, for lower body, for walls, starts, dolphin kicks. Um, there's going to be ones that are uh, more athletic in nature. Um, and so you'll be seeing that stuff come out um, sooner rather than la later. Um, second, secondly, if you want to get in touch with me and you have questions for me now about the workout or anything related to strength and conditioning and dry land training, um, on Instagram, you can find me at Lee Summers PT or email Lee Summers PT at Gmail. Um, also, if I see, see a bunch of you guys requesting that I come out, Feel free to drop thinner and faster and bread a line, letting them know that you'd love to see me out at one of these. Because I, it's been a while. My uh, my weekends when these are typically um, taking place, I'm typically training my swim clubs, uh, but I can always sneak away if I know if I have enough advance notice and can make it happen. Um, I've just pressed share on the workout, so hopefully that should be sharing right now. Fantastic. Have I ever been to Indiana? Only once and not really. I've never really been there. Kansas, also no. Um, so some more places that I would definitely like to go. Um, and um, what exercise do you suggest for breaststrokers? Um, there's a lot. Uh, the demands for a breaststroker are very different for the demands from every other stroke. Uh, I treat breaststrokers a little bit differently and so when I talk about that class where we're going to be doing lower body strength and power, I love doing that class specifically for breaststrokers because of the nature of the stroke. Keep in mind, the sport is very sagittal in nature. It's very linear. Everything's happening out in front, out in front, except for breaststrokers. They need to get a little bit more transverse, a little bit more frontal plane. There's more stuff happening farther outside of your body. Um, and it requ requires a little bit more power out of the lower body in, in a lot of cases. Um, have I ever been to New York? I grew up in New York City um, the first nine years of my life, um, but I don't make it back enough. New Jersey, absolutely. I went to school at Temple University in Philadelphia, so not far off. Lee, let me ask you a question. Um, if they wanted to just have a few simple um, things that they could use at home, what are, what are some things that you'd recommend getting online that they could use at home? So there is a slide that Tyler has um, that um, – has all the basic equipment that I was recommending my athletes get at home since I have to train them virtually. Okay, great. Dumbbells from five to 25 is a good place to start. They're really hard to come by right now, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, number two, a set of bands, light, medium, heavy, and extra heavy, because yeah. you can just really vary the things that you do with bands. They're very versatile. 
Um, and then lastly, those mini bands, which are super cheap. And if you can find them, um, very, very helpful for a lot of correctives in hip and shoulder stuff. Um, and those are, those are the basic. I mean, if you've got medicine balls, fantastic, because I like doing stuff with medicine balls, like slams and throws for power. Uh, they, make, they make training for power very accessible. Um, and again, very versatile. Okay. Um, I saw a question somewhere in here about Maryland and Virginia. Um, that is definitely someone, if you're in Maryland or Virginia, that, um, have you visited Machine Aquatics in either Virginia or Maryland? Um, yes, I have quite a few uh, Machine Aquatics athletes that come to me. Uh, I'm stationed most, mostly out of North Bethesda and Rockville. Um, but like I said, I've also worked in Tyson's Corner area. So I do get to work with some Machine Aquatics um, athletes as well, although I don't train the team. Um, all right. Oh, all right. I'm going to do that. Uh, hopefully that went through. Um, yeah, so I just typed in my Instagram handle. Nice. All right. So I've got you guys booked for another three minutes, so I'm willing to stay on here and ask questions. Um, North Carolina, I have not, but I have one of my favorite swimmers that I work with right now with NCAP uh, is go going on a full ride to North Carolina uh, this upcoming year and another one that's going to Duke. Um, so I will probably be going to North Carolina for ACC championships or when they have a dual meet. Um, so pretty excited for that. I've got a great uh, graduating class of athletes right now. Okay, that one says it, I can't get to the workout. I think that's one for you, um, Brett. Um, but like I said, if you guys are um, if you guys are interested in the uh, semi-private versions of these workouts, um, please keep your eyes open for the both uh, social media with Fitter and Faster, or reach out um, to Tyler Clary or Brett, um, as we will be rolling that out very shortly. Lee, I'll make sure that this workout is emailed to everybody that attended today. Absolutely. And like I said, this is a, this is a basic workout. And I think that uh, um, that you um, – it's Lucas Knapp. That's an interesting – I believe I may have had your brother for a minute, if you have an older brother. Um, so that workout is, like I said, a basic one. The workouts that we've been doing the last three weeks, if you piece those together, that's a nice place to start. Um, it, it's all stuff that's going to be helpful, useful, and safe. Uh, it's a nice place to start with your with your um, training, especially right now. Got a question yesterday about how often should I be doing this? Normally, for you guys, it's going to be two to three times a week. But right now, you're not in the water, so you're not overtraining if you do three to four times a week right now because you're not getting your time in the water for most of you. And you guys, all of you that are saying thank you, I really – Yes, Andrew Knapp. I believe I did have him for a minute. Uh, I train NCAP um, Georgetown prep site uh, along with some of the AU athletes. All right, so I'm going to let you guys go. But like I said, if you want to reach out to me on Instagram, follow me and or DM me. And I'm happy to uh, answer as many questions as I can. Thanks so much, guys. All right. Thank you, Lee. Appreciate the workout today. Absolutely, Brad. Take care, buddy. Bye-bye.